What's good, guys? We're back at it again with another video. As you can see from the title, I am going to MBPA Top 100 this morning. It's actually, what, 5.15, 5.20 a.m. right now. Y'all see, I really need to make sure I ain't got no crust in my eyes, nothing like that. But man, just being able to go to MBPA, this is something that I'm sure you guys understand. These camps are things that you dream about going to. And I wasn't good enough to go as a player, so to even have the opportunity to go now, I'm just so thankful to God and just really appreciate all of you guys because, you know, building up these platforms is why I even have this opportunity. So again, I want to say I appreciate all of you guys. I got some great content coming from this camp. I'm going to vlog it and we also going to talk about some of the top players that I see there because they did recently just release the rosters. And when I say talented, when I say stacked, when I say some of the elite basketball talent in the country are going to be in this camp, I can't wait to get in there. I'm going to talk to y'all when I get on the road. All right, y'all, so about 30 minutes away. Again, just wanted to say how excited I am to really go to this event. And like the players that are in this, is a lot of the players that you guys have been commenting down their names, uh, Tyron Stokes, I've seen a little bit of him on Vegas Elite, never seen him live up close. AJ, last name start with die something. I don't even know how to say his last name, never seen him for real. Darren Peterson, Key and Anthony, the Boozer twins. And those are just some of the players I know about. The thing that I'm really most excited about is getting eyes on some of the elite players in the country that might not have the big names and be highly ranked. With my 2022 and 2023, you know, class rankings that I ended up doing, I was mad sometimes because there would be some players after the fact that I'd find out about and I'd be like, man, if I would have saw him, you know, at the time when I made my top 10, he would have been for sure in there. So to be able to go here now and to see in person a hundred of the elite high school basketball players in the country and all be able to sit there and like I said, just really just watch and watch as many games, watch as many players as I can. Remember, everyone in here is good. So what I'm really looking for is the elite of the elite, guys that really catch my eye, guys that make plays not only on offense, but you know I like to see defense as well. Like I said, I'm really excited for it. I'm gonna talk to y'all when I get there. All right, guys, finally made it inside. I'm actually gonna show y'all what it looks like from where I'm sitting right now, because there actually isn't too many places where I can just walk around. But I did get in here early. I think I might be one of the first, you know, media people in here. There's one thing I do also want to say, on time is late. You know what I'm saying? You got somewhere to go, always get there 15 minutes early. That's what's on time is, getting there exactly when they tell you to. That's late, but like I said, let me show you guys what it looks like. See right here, we got Kean warming up, Tyron warming up. So like I said, man, it's a lot of big name players around here and I'm really excited to see the kids who don't have big names. I'm gonna check back in with y'all when we get started. Just wanted you guys to see the actual games start at 10 a.m. They start actually officially doing taping and warm up at nine. And I just want you guys to notice how much of these players are actually form shooting, working on their games. This is Cameron Boozer, number one player in the country form shooting working on his game early so when you guys come into these gyms and you just joking around playing having fun understand that for the best players when they walk in here they're going to warm up they're working on their game watch what all of these guys are doing all over on different courts getting their shots ready getting warm make sure you do this every time you step into the court especially if you want to get to a camp like this one day all right guys i wanted to check in with y'all so this first day today actually what i'm going to be doing in order to keep this as unbiased as possible and in order to make sure that i'm really really watching i'm not going to be filming too much today and actually when i take note of players i'm not even taking note of their name i'm only taking note of what number they're wearing and what team they're on if you think i'm joking
All right, guys, about to get started with the second half of games for today. I do have a couple things that I want to point out. One thing for everybody, including all the players in this camp, you guys have to know where you are on the floor. There have been so many players stepping out of bounds just, you know what I'm saying, they catch it in the corner. They don't know where their feet are. They could be on the wing, don't know where the sideline is. That's something you guys really need to pay attention to because these turnovers, they add up and they always contribute to losses. Also, we talk about it a lot on the channel, over dribbling. If you get to three dribbles, you're trying to make a move and you have taken three dribbles and you don't have some type of advantage, whether that be for yourself or for your teammate, please get off the ball. I mean, I see it. I understand it with a lot of these extremely talented players. You know, you like to rock out a little bit, but for everybody, I'm telling you, it looks better from a scout's perspective, from a coach's perspective. If, if I don't have an advantage, you get off the ball and you might get it right back, but please pass the ball. All right, guys, it's the next day. Just wanted to give you all a little update before I hit the road for day two. Like I told y'all yesterday, the majority of the time was just focusing on me watching and trying to be as unbiased as possible to really be able to evaluate and see who I really think are the best players out there. I did put out a list of my day one standouts. We had AJ Dibansa. I think that's how you say his last name. That was my first time seeing him live. So for me to see him, a player in the class of 2026, I think he averaged 26 and a half. This man, six, seven, long arms. I'm talking about activity on another level, whether that be on the defensive end, getting in passing lanes, he was getting steals, he was rebounding the ball. In transition, offensively, extremely hard to stop. He was also showing flashes of skill on the offensive end in the half court, showing that he can knock down a one dribble pull up, showing that he can knock down open threes as well, also showing that he can handle the ball a little bit. I also wanna talk about Tyron Stokes as well, also 6'7", but more physical in the class of 2026. And for a player like him, he didn't take the most shots, but again, activity level, rebounding on the defensive end, being everywhere, running the floor in transition, leading to a lot of open buckets. Tyron is also showing flashes of offensive skill as well. Right now, he might not have the best handle. It might be, you know, one or two dribbles. But again, in transition, you can throw it ahead to him or he can push it himself. You can give it to him in the half court against a mismatch and he can create his own offense, whether that be scoring or causing the defense to foul him. Also want to talk about Cameron Boozer, Cooper Flag a little bit. Obviously, everyone talks about them. Those are the big name players, but they did produce. Remember, I told you guys, I went into the camp only wanting to write down numbers and teams, not names. I wasn't looking at names at all. And even so, them dudes still showed why they are ranked and why they are so highly touted. They played each other. I would say Cameron Boozer did get the best of that matchup, but Cooper Flagg's team won. The biggest thing I just noticed was how easy it looked for both of them in this camp. Honestly, it didn't even look like those two even had to try too much to make an impact on the game. Cooper Flagg, even when his shot wasn't falling, defensively, again, we've talked about it. That's what makes him special. He was blocking shots in the passing lanes, getting steals, making plays. Cameron Boozer always making the right play, whether that be on offense, on defense, doesn't take bad shots. He knows what he's good at and he does that extremely well. While at the same time, he's starting to expand his game, showing that he can knock down that jumper a little bit more consistently and showing that he can put the ball on the floor a little bit more consistently. So that was extremely big time to see. Wanted to talk about some guards as well. Jeremiah Fears, Darius Acuff. Darius Acuff, I want to talk about him first because he is the first guard I did get eyes on. This kid at 6'1", I want you guys to think more of a Sharif Cooper type of player. At his size, being able to completely control a game, using his pace, using his ability to score the ball, whether that be shooting a three, with floaters, he also showed an ability to finish around the rim, even amongst the trees, wide finishes, whatever you wanted. So seeing Darius Acuff yesterday for the first time, I'm telling you, this is one of the best players in the class of 2025. I know a lot of people don't know about him now, but a lot of people will in the next upcoming year. Then Jeremiah Fears, Illinois command, kind of similar in terms of controlling the game while using pace. But also on the defensive end, Jeremiah Fears was getting after it. I'm talking about really trying to get over ball screens, which you don't see too much, especially in a camp setting. Really trying to get over ball screens, really trying to lock up. Well, on the offensive end, showing that he can get wherever he wants to, and it looks extremely easy. I'm talking about his handle. It looked like cones sometimes out there. We're also showing vision, being able to pass. He had a couple crazy passes that I watched live. 
So both of those two guards really opened my eyes. I also want to talk about Derek Queen, one of the most skilled bigs I've seen, if not the most skilled big in the camp, being able to have patience on the block, patience from the high post, showing that he can knock down that high post jumper, while also being able to score out the block. I also watched him handle the ball some, bring it up in transition. Now that might not be something he'll do all the time, but just showing that ability to do that. Big time Bryson Tiller as well, just size, physicality, already looking like he has a college body, even though he's in the class of 2025, showing skill as well though, while also showing activity level. A lot of the players that I put in my day one standouts, they weren't just scoring because this is the MBPA top 100 camp. Every player in this camp is good at basketball and more times than not, all of them can score. So I'm looking at, okay, Everyone can pretty much score. Who can do things on the court other than that to affect winning those eight players were the players that I really wanted to shout out for the first day. But like I said, we're about to go head into day two. I'm going to talk to you all when I get there. Just finished watching the first set of games. I actually took a new set of notes of what? Numbers and team names, not names of the players. Of course, like I said, I want to keep this as unbiased as possible, but I did just want to check in with y'all and say that one thing I'm noticing is with the best players in the country, and keep in mind, these are 100 of the best of the best, but the best of those players, I'm telling you, their activity level is on another level. We have a lot of players in here, and I've seen them in gyms all over the country. You want to be cool. You want to go through the motions, this, this, and that. No, like the top players in the country, the ones that are standing out from the rest, activity level and i don't mean just scoring i'm talking about those are the kids that are diving on the ground those are the kids going for every loose ball going for every rebound and i'm telling you it shows like if you guys want to be considered among that group you have to do the little things you have to give it everything you have every time you step out there on the court good guys day three headed into mbpa this is going to be the last day just wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about some of my day two standouts which was yesterday first player i want to talk about aj devansa for the second day in a row this kid could have been depending on who you asked the best player out there on the court and he even took it a step further than that first day because you remember after the first day i said six seven wing really high activity level showing flashes of offense well yesterday he dropped 31 and like i said didn't look like anyone can stop him going downhill but what he was doing yesterday was also showing that he can knock down mid-range jump shots with a level of consistency whether it be those pull-ups he was also showing that he can get the ball on the block knock down turnaround fadeaways doing everything out there while also still maintaining a really high activity level. I was still watching him getting in passing lanes, really defending, trying to block shots, like really trying to do everything to affect winning. So this is why I'm saying like yesterday, he could have been, depending on who you ask, the best player on the court. Next player I want to talk about, Cameron Boozer. Like Cameron Boozer and Cooper Flagg, we might as well talk about them together. Like those two guys are some of the most highly touted players in the class of 2025. You see them everywhere. They're some of the most popular players on social media. So of course, after that first day, when I had them in the standouts, I'm like, okay, you know, a lot of people talk about them all the time. Let me, let me try and look for some other players. You know, I already know what they're gonna do, but let me try and look for some other players, right? Still, Cameron Boozer and Cooper Flagg made plays to the point where I would be lying if I didn't include both of them in the standouts, Cameron Boozer. 6'9 power forward that always makes the right play. He has a feel for the game that you really don't get, especially from the big spot, because it is starting to look like, okay, he is probably gonna be more of a big than a wing, uh, more of a big than a than a Paolo. He will be able to put it on the ground, but I don't know if he'll be as, you know, as mobile with the ball as how Paolo is, we'll see. But his feel for the game, IQ for the game, at his age, at his position, you really don't see it that much. Like, especially from the big man spot, like for me, I didn't feel like I had a real gauge on when I should be making certain passes. Like if I'm gonna pick and roll and somebody steps up, I need to be able to land on two, make that skip pass to the corner. If I get the ball on the block and I'm backing somebody down, being able to pick the ball up and shoot that skip pass to the corner or having the vision to be able to look when someone's cutting, be able to make that drop off pass. I didn't feel like I had that really down into my junior, senior year. He is 16 years old. 
this is what I want people to understand that even past all the physical attributes, like he already has the college ready body and everything like that, like IQ wise, feel for the game wise, it's on a whole nother level already, which is why it's gonna be extremely exciting to see how Cameron Boozer develops. Because like I said, he's showing that he can knock down the three. He's showing that he can knock down a mid range jumper. He can score out of the post, he can score in the paint, he can pass. Honestly, I don't know if there's a more complete high school basketball player right now than Cameron Boozer, Cooper Flagg. His shot hasn't really been falling throughout this entire camp, but all it has done is been able to show me how special he is in terms of as a two-way player. Like kids have been scared of him in terms of trying to go to the paint because he is trying to block everything defensively wreaking havoc, switching on all five bigger players, smaller players. And then offensively, I'll be honest, it looked kind of easy. It kind of looked like he was just playing around out there. Like I'm being completely serious. So even though I'm saying his shots weren't falling, if you check his stats, he was putting up numbers. So imagine what he looks like when his shots are falling. This is why I'm saying these two players, Boozer and Flag, 2025 looking extremely different. Also speaking on 2025, Darius Aka. Remember, like I said, I want you guys to really start to think of a Sharif Cooper type of player in terms of a 6'1 guard showing that he can get wherever he wants, playing at his own pace. He even got the same kind of Sharif, kind of lackadaisical kind of walk move to him. Um, can knock down threes. Now, I won't say he's the best three-point shooter, but he can knock him down, can knock down the mid-range jumper, finish his floaters, finish in the paint around size. He can pass as well. From what I'm seeing, he's looking like a real true point guard that will do what it takes to win. If he needs to score, it's looking like he can score. I think he's leading the entire camp in scoring right now. If he needs to pass, he can pass. He had a, it was a 30 and 10 game or he had 28 and 10 or something like that. So it's looking like whatever his team needs, he can do. His team was also at the leaderboard of the entire camp in terms of wins. They got their first loss yesterday, but again, they're number two, three and one. So the way he plays translates to winning, which is why I'm saying this is one of the better guards in the class of 2025, if not the best. I uh, also want to talk about Bryson Tucker as well, wing in the class of 2024, plays at IMG. So I have seen him a little bit, obviously. I've been to see IMG a couple times recently. Great size at the position, athleticism, mid-range killer, looking for his mid-range jump shot, can knock that down, knows where his spots are. Um, also was active in transition, getting out on the break, finishing. Just had a really good overall day making shots and being consistent. I also highlighted Isaiah Evans as well. We've done his breakdown recently on the channel, class of 2024 wing. What did I say in that breakdown? He is a clipper. He's trying to get his shots off and he is a bucket. They call him baby BI, Brandon Ingram. Um, from what I saw, I will say that that is a little bit accurate. This player is one that once he gets hot, once he gets hot, he's extremely hard to stop. I literally watched him run off, I don't know how many to start the game against Cameron Boozer, like in a row, consistently. Same thing I think on that first day, on the initial first game, killing, came out the gate killing. When his shot is falling, one of the hardest players to guard in the class, especially at his size, six, seven, six, eight, long arms. That's why they really compare him to BI, but can make any shot. We saw in that other breakdown, he was making one-legged threes, turnarounds, every shot you want, he can knock down. And he was showing that, I will say, when he's driving to the rim, there are times where he shows that he can struggle to finish over size and length. But again, his bread and butter is his jump shot, getting to his jump shot at his size. He can get it off whenever he wants. And at this point, he's currently knocking down at a pretty good clip. He's currently shooting 42% from three in this camp, 44 from the field. If you guys have seen the type of shots that he's actually been taking, those numbers are pretty good. So again, this is another extremely talented player in the class of 2024. Definitely gonna be a top 10, top 15 player. And you know, we'll see, but his potential is definitely three letter league. You know, I'll say that. I also wanna talk about Tahad Pettiford. This is a player who you guys have been commenting on the channel a lot, a lot. A lot, a lot of you guys probably don't know this, but I kind of had to stop doing the breakdowns because I lost access to where I was getting my film from. So I had to shift the channel and why I have started to do a little bit more in-person breakdowns because I don't really have that film anymore. But to hide, like I already knew who he was because like I said, a lot of you guys have been commenting his name for a while. 6'1", 6'2", guard, lefty, extremely skilled. Uh, looks like a score, but also showing that he can pass and he can run an offense, play out of the pick and roll as well. But like I said, it's looking like he does like to score. He can knock down the three. He likes to shoot the three. Also can knock down the mid range. Also can finish in the paint. Just a pretty good all around offensive player. And like I said, passing, that's another thing that he was showing me is that in the pick and roll, he can make reads. Transition when it's two on one, he was showing an ability to make that lob pass. Or even in the half court, being able to make lob passes, being able to drive to the rim, bring up 
that big and make the right pass. So all in all, I was extremely impressed with Tahai Pettiford and his numbers for this camp. I think he's the fifth leading scorer, averaging 21. He's definitely a name in the class of 2024 that people need to pay attention to, and I can't wait to see what he does at Auburn. Last but not least, I do want to talk about Darren Peterson. Darren Peterson is a player that coming into this camp, I'll be honest, I was walking into here expecting him to be the best player out of everybody by far, just from what I'd seen on film, just knowing already how skilled he is, how technical he is, how advanced his game is, even at his age, again, class of 2025. On the first day though, he was solid. His shot just wasn't falling and there were times where I think he was just trying to figure out, okay, where are my spots in terms of how everybody's guarding me? Because everyone in the camp also knows who Darren Peterson is, so they are gonna guard him a little bit more. So I think he was just figuring out on the first day. Yesterday though, his shot started to fall. Another thing that I did not see on the film when I initially did Darren Peterson's breakdown he does other things on the floor other than score, other than being an extremely skilled player. I watched him try and guard on defense, like actually, actually try, give effort on defense. He was getting steals, getting in passing lanes, also getting on ball steals as well. Another thing, assisting, passing the ball, vision. I won't say he has the craziest vision, but what I will say is he does know where the right pass is and he can make the right pass. Also rebounding. You check the stat sheet at the end of his games and even if he wasn't making shots, he'll have six rebounds, he'll have maybe four or five assists, you know what I'm saying, two steals, things like that. And that's part of the reason why I felt like he really was a standout. And again, he's the type of player that when his shots are falling, easily top five to eight player in the class, easily. All right guys, so those were my standouts from yesterday. I'll check back in with y'all when I get there. All right guys, made it inside. You remember what my list looked like the first day? Well, this is what it looks like now. I actually wanna start and go through some of these players because out of the 100, I do have a pretty good amount that I at least wanna mention their names and a little bit about what they do, what I liked about them. I'll post my list of top 10 standouts actually on my Instagram, so you can go follow me, BTI Basketball, on my Twitter, it's the same handle. But I'll start to go through these players now who aren't on that top 10, but we're still noteworthy. We got Mikael Brown, we got Morez Johnson Jr., Jamari Phillips, VJ Edgecombe, I've been seeing his name a lot. He did have some good flashes. Uh, throughout this week showing himself as a scorer, whether that be being able to knock down jump shots or get to the basket. Jalen Harrelson, I never heard about him before, but he's a wing in the class of 2025. He definitely showed me some flashes for sure. Uh, Josiah Mosley, we got Ifioza Oliogu. He's actually from Canada, 6'6 in the class of 2025. He was really good this week. Uh, also, Drake Powell on the Suns, number 55, was able to get to his mid-range pull-up whenever he wanted and was pretty efficient with that all week. Uh, we got Jacob Wilkins, number nine on the Heat. He also showed flashes 6'7", six, 6'8", six, of being able to create his own offense. Also, Tyler Jackson, Tyler Bessie, Curtis Givens, Ahmad Noel, Jaden Quaintance. I think that's how you say his last name. He's also a big as well. Since we're talking about bigs, Flory Badunga, he has some good flashes as well as a lefty big. He dunks everything in the paint, also rebounds well, tries to block shots. I also like Pape. Uh, I'm not sure what his last name is. He's a seven-footer, also block shots, uh, vertical spacer. Also, Pace Marshall, you know, he plays for Kale, seven footer big, uh, showed great patience on the block, also being able to pass out of the post, really good with that. As y'all can see, I made it home, just had to cut in right quick to say this. I did forget to mention one player, number 79, and I remember his number off the top of my head, Con Weppel. I think that's how you say his last name. His last name starts with a K. And actually, one of you guys actually commented his name before I even got there, 6'6 six, six shooter had footwork, was on a team where they didn't have the most talent, but I'm telling you, he was one of the biggest competitors in the gym throughout the entire camp. Every single game he came to play, and you may or may not see him tomorrow when I post my 10 or 11 standouts from the camp. I also want to say this, because this is a basketball channel, and I know you guys for sure wanted to see some film of the camp, I'm going to end this video with just straight film. Like, share, subscribe, turn on post notifications. I appreciate you guys watching. See you guys next time with the next video.